Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, the Split City DIY, and today I've got another pedal from Electro Smash to take a look at. This time it's not quite what you might be expecting. Uh, it's the uh, Arduino audio meter. Uh, and as you can probably tell by looking at it, it's basically a giant LED matrix, but inside a guitar pedal. So basically it's four 8x8 matrices that are smooshed together to make a 16x16 matrix. Uh, there's an acrylic top so that you can see all the innards, which is very nice. And then we've got an aluminum housing uh, to keep it all nice and safe and sturdy. A uh, quarter inch in, quarter inch out, so you can just throw it into your effects chain. Uh, nine volt uh, DC power jack at the top. And then at the bottom, we've got the Arduino USB, uh, which kind of brings us to how is this thing working? You may have guessed by the name and the fact that I just pr uh, point out this USB port, uh, it is in fact running with an Arduino. Uh, there are headers on the bottom of the PCB that allow for an Arduino Uno form factor board to plug right in. And then you can run your code off of that and the thing lights up and we're having a good time. The Uno is meant to kind of stay inside the board. I mean, it's pretty easy to get into this thing. We've just got some Phillips head screws holding on the top, but I mean, it is kind of meant to stay there. Uh, so I, because of that, I actually threw in my Alegu like Uno clone that I never use. I threw that in here so it can just stay there forever. Because of the nature of the drill hole and everything, um, it is meant for that full USB-B uh, I think that with a, a micro B, it would be kind of tight. So like those Adafruit ones, I think it would be kind of kind of be a little weird to fish in there to plug in. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, now Electro Smash, uh, they have a great forum with uh, support for all their pedals, but especially for this one, they've they've really set up the code base and everything so that you can kind of work through it almost like a coding tutorial and make your own effects. Uh, I should note, you can only store one effect on here at a time, but I imagine you'd probably pick your favorite um, LED matrix effect and let it run, and that would be how most people would probably use this pedal, uh, kind of like a set and forget. And they do have code documentation so that you can kind of make your own effects. You can kind of go through and see how each one is working, uh, which is nice and it's nice to see. And like LED matrices are cool on their own, but you may have guessed since it's in the pedal form factor that you can also have it be reactive to music, which, or your guitar or your bass or whatever you're playing, your synth, your saxophone, whatever you're up to. So you can basically have it be a spectrum analyzer on your pedal board or on your shelf wherever you want to keep it. As you know, I'm very into music visualization with LEDs, so seeing this is kind of a, a masterpiece. There is a lot of back end on the code for this pedal, especially for the audio spectrum examples. Since all the audio processing is uh, software based, there isn't um, hardware handling that. So uh, they do a good job of explaining what's going on and the necessary pieces you need so that you should, if you were so inclined, uh, be able to come up with your own effects and uh, ways to use this. Now this does come as a kit. Uh, you assemble it up. As always, I, I kind of hold Electro Smash uh, in pretty high regard as far as their instructions go. They have great pictures, uh, they label their components beautifully, everything comes just so nicely together, uh, which is nice, and this is no exception. Uh, I will say this one, um, because of the nature of the layout of the PCB and the matrices, like uh, you do have to definitely pay attention to the order of the steps that they're telling you to follow, and if you do that, you'll be totally fine. However, I got a little distracted by making sure the pins were straight on the LED matrices and getting them slotted in that I soldered them up uh, a step early so then I wasn't able to solder in the max uh, 7219 ICs um, as through-hole components. Uh, but no big deal, I just kind of soldered them in uh, service mount style, just going along the sides of the pins, and it, it worked out fine. But just, just something to keep in mind, pay attention to what you're doing. And related to that, when I first powered this thing up after assembly, uh, I had like a couple of rows out across a couple of matrices and I was trying to figure out what was going on. Um, and then I, when I opened up the pedal, I realized I'd actually forgotten to solder a couple pins on a couple of the matrices and also the max 
one max seventy two nineteen as well. I think because I got, got so distracted by the fact that I had like skipped a step that I stopped soldering and then I didn't go back. So you know, just just make sure everything's soldered up and you'll be fine. That probably goes without saying, but you know, for someone like me, you got to say it. But yeah, basically very simple assembly. And once you have it all assembled up, you can start using it. Who'd have thought? Uh, so looking at some of the example code, uh, personally, I was drawn more to the audio um, analyzer style ones. Uh, there's a really cool 16 by 16 matrix one uh, that kind of looks like an audio waveform as it dances across. And I, I that's probably my favorite one. Of course, you can also have your classic kind of bar graph spectrum analyzer, if that's what you're looking for. And that's in the 32 by 16 matrix, you get that more traditional style. Now, the example code base that they have isn't just limited to um, spectrum analyzers. They also have a guitar tuner example code, which I was curious on uh, to see how accurate it was. It was actually pretty accurate comparing it to my tuner, um, which is kind of a, a knock around fender, but it gets the job done. And uh, it was pretty much dead on, which is nice. The only thing I noticed, at least with the code um, that I was using, it seemed to only recognize your standard tuning, so it was only picking up E, A, D, G, and B. Uh, so you could probably uh, fix up the code if you do any um, sort of different drop tunings or wanted to make it so that it maybe recognized all notes. Uh, but yeah, I was impressed with how well that was working. And the visualization on the matrix was also uh, quite nice to let you know it was in tune or whether you were sharp or flat. So uh, that, I was pleasantly surprised by that. I did test it with a couple different effect types because I was curious if um, you really had to kind of blast it out to get it to recognize. But um, I tested it with my fuzz pedal. A clean tone. and also uh, my mono synth pedal. And it was as reactive across uh, all those effects, so that was nice to see. Sometimes, um, even in Spectrum Analyzers I've built, you know, you it will only really react to really more harsher tones, it will kind of cut through, but at least uh, with my guitar rig, it was um, picking up basically anything I threw at it, which means it'll appeal to a large number of players. It's not just for your metalheads, and it's not just for your punks. It'll kind of pick up on anything, which is good. I also want to say um, I didn't notice any introduced noise either from the pedal. There is noise when you have the USB plugged in, uh, but that's kind of to be expected because it's going to bring in all of bunch of different um, signals that aren't properly grounded, but uh, otherwise it was it kept everything nice and clean, nice bypass. Now beyond audio reactive effects, there are some games uh, that they have up for you to play with. There's a, a fun Pong game, uh, there's Snake, a bunch of others, all that I'm pretty bad at, but uh, another cool use of the pedal kind of being used almost like a, a kit just to play with LED matrices, especially since you have the potentiometer and the rotary encoder. So you could really play around with this and it almost kind of becomes this handheld gaming device um, with the Arduino built in. So pretty cool. There's also some kind of static lighting effects too, kind of called the lamp, um, which you can also adjust the brightness on. Um, and I could see that honestly coming in handy on the pedal uh, if you were, maybe you didn't want the audio spectrum effects, but you want like a light that you can engage on stage to check something real quick on your pedal board. Or even like, I, I know that most practice spaces I played in didn't exactly have the best lighting. They're usually in basements and other sketchy places. So <laughs> if you need a quick light, uh, this could, uh, you could use it for that purpose as well. Uh, something not to be over overlooked. So overall impressions of this thing, as you know, I love LEDs. And I mean, throw in some sound reactive LEDs, I'm hooked. So having this in a pedal form factor, uh, I think is really awesome. I mean, come on. Is it practical? Unless you're using it as a tuner or that light idea, probably not. This is really more about aesthetics. And as far as aesthetics goes, it definitely hits that. You got the acrylic 
top to see the top there. And I think this is a really nice size, the 16 by 16, you know, not too big, not too small, uh, big enough that you're going to get that visualization, but it's not too overpowering that you're like, whoa, that's a little bright. I do wish you could load up multiple effects on here. I got a little spoiled with uh, their time manipulator pedal that allowed you to do that. Would like to see that on here, but I think there's so much back end with a lot of the code that it would be kind of crazy to do. And additionally, I like to see an on off switch. I think the idea is probably that you're gonna throw this in your effects chain and it'll just kind of be on, which makes sense. But even if it just had like a side toggle, um, or I mean, personally, I would prefer to see the actual stomp um, button that you see on pedals, um, just cause I just like things like that to have an on off switch. So that's, that's just me. That was the only thing I was a little surprised to see that there was no on off switch. But otherwise, construction is great. Uh, the light, uh, the code base is well supported so far and a lot of options out there. Uh, you can even use it as, like I said, um, a way to kind of noodle around with LED matrices in general. And you already have the circuitry set up to have it be audio reactive too, which is, uh, is nice. So if you're looking to have, uh, audio reactive lights in your effects chain or even on your shelf next to your preferred uh, music playing experience, whether it be analog or digital, uh, I think uh, this, is a, this is a nice little, little box that you can uh, have kicking around. I think the way it presents, it kind of looks like this little boutique kind of audio spectrum analyzer, uh, which I'm, I'm into it. I dig it. Uh, but that's going to do it for this video. Uh, if you liked it, toss me a thumbs up, leave a question or comments down below. I'll have links in the description to where you can find this as well as the forums so that you can take a look at the uh, code base and other support that Electro Smash has assembled. Gotta hand it to Electro Smash, they're always pushing the envelope, making new and exciting things in the world of DIY guitar pedals. But thank you for watching, consider subscribing for more content like this, and until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.